Do you believe you know the true path of life? Get ready. Challenging everything you thought you knew, I bring ten astonishing steps that, contrary to appearances, might lead you not to success, but to complete ruin. But don't despair. This controversial and provocative journey is also the key to awakening a hidden strength within you, a powerful inner fortress, ready to be unleashed. Stay with me and discover, in just a few minutes, how to turn imminent disaster into an overwhelming victory. This is your chance to change everything. Are you ready for this challenge? Step 1. Yielding to Impulsive Emotions it is not the events themselves that disturb us, but our interpretation of them. This maxim from Seneca leads us to the threshold of the first phase towards decline, the submission to spontaneous and overwhelming emotions like anger and fear. The true challenge lies not in external obstacles, but in the internal struggle to maintain calmness and self-control. In this scenario, imagine yourself in an adverse situation. Your heart races, your hands might even shake, and a whirlwind of negative thoughts begins to form. At this moment, the choice seems simple. Succumb to the emotions boiling inside you, or take a deep breath and seek tranquility. The key lies in understanding that anger and fear, though powerful, are just temporary guests in our mind. They knock on the door, make noise, but don't need to take over the house. However, when we give space to these impulsive emotions, we allow them to steer our actions. It's like being at the wheel of a car, but letting anger and fear take control, leading us down winding, often dangerous paths that rarely lead to favorable destinations. The secret then is to recognize these emotions, accept them as part of the human experience but not let them be the protagonists of our decisions. In this process, true strength emerges not from fierce resistance, but from the ability to be like water, flowing, adapting, yet always maintaining its essence. It's in this serene flow that we find the clarity to act thoughtfully and balanced without being swept away by the torrent of unbridled emotions. As we address this first step, it's essential to remember that we all face these moments of emotional turbulence. It's not a weakness, but a part of our human journey. Wisdom lies in recognizing these moments, learning from them, and gradually shaping a more balanced and reflective response. Therefore, as you reflect on this first step, I invite you to think about the times when your emotions took the reins. What was that experience like? What did it teach you? And more importantly, how can you use this knowledge to navigate more serenely through the sometimes turbulent seas of life? Step 2. The unceasing pursuit of external approval. Continuing on the path that leads us to understand the nuances of personal decline, we encounter the second milestone, the unceasing pursuit of others' approval. Epictetus, with his timeless wisdom, advised, If you seek inner peace, do less. This advice resonates deeply in this context. The obsession with constantly seeking recognition and validation from others is a journey towards chronic dissatisfaction and forgetting the intrinsic value each of us carries. Imagine yourself on a stage with the spotlight focused on you. Every action, every word, every gesture is performed with the intention of capturing applause and admiring glances from the audience. However, this audience is fickle and their applause is ephemeral. The pursuit of external approval is like trying to build a house on sand, unstable and always susceptible to the changing tides of public opinion. True approval, the kind that sustains and gives meaning, springs from within. It comes from acknowledging your own achievements, respecting your values, and celebrating your uniqueness. When you step away from the noise of others' expectations and turn to the quietude of your being, you begin to understand that the only approval that truly matters is your own. In this process of introspection, we discover that authenticity is our most precious asset. 
It is when we stop performing for an imaginary audience and start living for ourselves that true freedom reveals itself. This freedom is not a loud shout, but a gentle whisper that tells us, you are enough. This step is an invitation to reflection. How many times have we lost ourselves in the labyrinth of others' expectations? How many times have we sacrificed our desires and dreams on the altar of external approval? And more importantly, how can we reorient our internal compass to point towards what truly brings us peace and satisfaction? As we consider this second step, it's essential to remember that the path to self-knowledge and self-acceptance is both challenging and liberating. It asks us to silence the external voices and listen to our own voice. The one that deep down always knew what's best for us. Step three, avoidance in the face of challenges. We now advance to the third step in this journey of self-understanding and personal growth, the tendency to shy away from challenges. The Stoics, with their ancient wisdom, teach us that the obstacle is the way. This counterintuitive thought unveils a powerful truth. Avoiding challenges is, in reality, fleeing from opportunities for growth. By facing adversities, we not only overcome obstacles, but also strengthen our character and expand our resilience. Imagine the image of a towering mountain. It rises majestic and challenging before us. Some may look at it and see only an insurmountable obstacle, a barrier to be avoided. However, others see in it an invitation to surpass their own limits, a chance to ascend to new heights of strength and self-awareness. The climb may be tough, filled with rocks and uncertain paths, but each step forward is a triumph over one's own doubts and fears. By running away from challenges, we deprive ourselves of these transformative experiences. Like a tree that grows in protected soil and never faces strong winds, our ability to withstand and thrive is diminished. It is only when we face life's storms that our roots deepen and we become more sturdy and robust. Facing adversities does not mean seeking suffering or acting recklessly. It is about recognizing that within each challenge lies a seed of opportunity, the chance to learn something new, to expand our horizons, and to become stronger, wiser versions of ourselves. This third step is an invitation to courage. A courage not proclaimed loudly, but a silent one that makes us rise every morning and face the world with its numerous uncertainties and possibilities. It's a call to look within ourselves and ask, what challenges am I avoiding? How can I confront them to grow and evolve? As you reflect on this step, consider the times when you stood at a crossroads, having to choose between the easy path and the challenging one. Remember that in each difficult choice, there is a lesson to be learned and strength to be gained. Step four, disregarding personal reflection. Entering the fourth stage of this introspective exploration, we confront the neglect of personal reflection. The Socratic maxim, know thyself, echoes here as a beacon of wisdom. A lack of self-knowledge leaves us like leaves in the wind, drifting aimlessly at the mercy of external whims and currents. Reflecting on oneself is not a luxury exercise, but a fundamental necessity. It is through this deep dive into the depths of our being that we begin to understand our true motivations, desires and fears. Without this inward journey, we remain on the surface of our existence, often confused and disoriented, like a ship without a compass in the open sea. Imagine yourself in front of a mirror, not just to contemplate your external image, but to seek the reflection of your inner essence. This reflection is not an act of vanity, but of courage. The courage to face your imperfections, to recognize your weaknesses and to celebrate your strengths. It is a continuous process, sometimes uncomfortable, but always enriching. In the fast-paced world we live in, 
where external noise often drowns out our inner voice, taking a moment for reflection becomes a revolutionary act. It's an invitation to slow down, to disconnect from the incessant distractions, and to connect with oneself. It is in this space of quietude and introspection that we find clarity and direction. To disregard personal reflection is to walk with blindfolded eyes. It is to miss the opportunity to grow, to transform, and to live a life aligned with your deepest values. Each moment of self-analysis is a step towards a fuller understanding of who we are and what we can be. This fourth step is an invitation to introspection. It's an opportunity to ask yourself, who am I truly? What are the values that guide my life? Am I living in accordance with these values? By asking these questions, we open the doors to a journey of discovery and authenticity. Step five, dependence on external pleasures. We now arrive at the fifth and crucial step of this journey of self-awareness and evolution the dependence on external pleasures. Epictetus, with his philosophical clarity, teaches us that happiness is something internal, not external. This thought guides us to understand that seeking happiness in material pleasures or external sources is an uncertain and unstable route, as these elements are beyond our control. We live in an era where the temptation to seek satisfaction in material things and instant gratifications is constant. Whether through incessant consumption, the pursuit of social status, or the need for external recognition, many of us fall into the trap of believing that these superficial pleasures are the key to lasting happiness. However, this external quest for contentment is like chasing the wind. It's an endless journey, always dependent on factors out of our reach. Material things, no matter how luxurious, are transient. They may bring momentary joy, but are incapable of providing deep and lasting satisfaction. True happiness, the kind that is sustainable and genuine, springs from within. It comes from a sense of inner peace, self-acceptance, and the ability to find joy in life's simple things. When our happiness is grounded in who we are, and not in what we own or what others think of us, it becomes unshakable, resistant to life's storms. This fifth step is an invitation to reflect on what we truly value. It's a moment to question, what really brings me happiness? Am I seeking contentment in external sources, or am I nurturing my inner joy? By shifting the focus from external to internal, we begin to cultivate a source of happiness that is truly ours, independent of circumstances or possessions. As you contemplate this step, it's essential to recognize that the journey towards internal happiness is not a denial of material pleasures, but a rebalancing. It's understanding that while these pleasures can add colors to our life, they are not the canvas itself. The foundation of our happiness should be built on more solid and personal grounds. If you have reached this point, I know you are truly focused and in pursuit of wisdom and evolution. Comment with seeking wisdom in today's date to show you are really committed. Let's continue. Step six, overlooking the transience of life. The sixth step in this journey of introspection and self-discovery is the understanding and acceptance of life's transient nature. Marcus Aurelius, one of the most renowned philosopher emperors, advised us to constantly remember the ephemeral nature of our existence. This acknowledgement is crucial for valuing the present and acting with purpose and meaning. We often live as if we were immortal, procrastinating dreams, postponing meetings, and leaving important words unsaid, as if there were always a guaranteed tomorrow. This illusion of permanence leads us to forget the preciousness of each moment and the uniqueness of every lived experience. Consider the metaphor of a flower. It blooms, displays its beauty and fragrance to the world, but it doesn't last forever. 
Its transience does not diminish its beauty. On the contrary, it makes it even more precious. Similarly, by recognizing that our life is a collection of fleeting moments, we start to value them more intensely and authentically. Remembering the fleeting nature of life is not an invitation to sadness, but a call to action. It's an encouragement to live fully, to embrace our loved ones, to forgive old grievances, and to pursue our passions vigorously. It's a reminder not to let minor adversities overshadow the grandeur of our journey. This sixth step is an invitation to reflect on how we are living our lives. Are we truly present in our days, or are we just passing through them? Are we contributing to the world and the people around us in a meaningful way? How can we live each day more fully, knowing that each one is a unique gift? As we contemplate this step, we are invited to look inward and outward, to recognize the fleetingness of life and thus value the eternal present. It's an invitation to live with purpose, passion and gratitude, celebrating each breath as an invaluable treasure. Step 7. Resistance to Adaptation As we approach the seventh and final stage of this journey of self-discovery and growth, we confront resistance to adaptation, a significant obstacle on the path to a fulfilling and meaningful life. Stoicism, with its timeless wisdom, teaches the importance of adaptation as a vital skill to navigate life's constant changes. Resistance to change is a natural human reaction, but often a source of suffering and dissatisfaction. As beings accustomed to our comfort zone, we tend to view change as a threat, something to be avoided. However, change is an undeniable constant of life, and our inability to adapt to it can lead us to a state of stagnation and discontent. Imagine a tree in the midst of a storm. Those that refuse to sway with the wind end up breaking, while those that bend and adapt survive and continue to grow. Similarly, our ability to adapt to life's changes determines our capacity to grow, evolve, and thrive in the face of challenges. Adaptation does not mean losing our essence or abandoning our core values. Rather, it is about being flexible in approaches, open to new experiences, and ready to adjust our paths in the face of new realities. It's about understanding that change is not only inevitable but often beneficial, opening us up to new perspectives and opportunities. This seventh step is an invitation to reflect on our attitude towards change. Are we clinging to old ways simply because they are comfortable? Are we open to new learnings and experiences that can enrich our lives? How can we cultivate a mindset that not only accepts but welcomes change as an essential part of our growth? As we consider this step, we are invited to assess our flexibility and adaptability. Recognizing that by embracing change, we are not losing ourselves, but finding ourselves in new forms and on new paths. Step 8. Neglecting Human Relationships Adding an eighth step to this deep journey of self-knowledge, we arrive at the theme of neglecting human relationships. Marcus Aurelius, one of the most celebrated emperors and philosophers, reminded us that we are made for cooperation. Ignoring human relationships is to neglect an essential part of our existence and nature. Human relationships are the fabric that connects society, creating a mosaic of experiences and emotions. They are fundamental not only for our emotional well-being, but also for our growth and development as individuals. By neglecting these relationships, we miss out on the opportunity to learn from others to share joys and sorrows, and to support and be supported. In a world increasingly connected technologically yet often emotionally disconnected, it's easy to forget the importance of genuine human contact. We are so immersed in our routines and screens that we sometimes overlook meaningful interactions, those that nourish our soul and make us feel part of something larger. 
Imagine life as a great journey in a boat. We can choose to sail alone, but the journey becomes much richer and more rewarding when we have fellow travelers. These companions help us face storms, share the beauties of the journey, and offer different perspectives on the world and ourselves. This eighth step is an invitation to reflect on how we are cultivating our relationships. Are we giving due attention to the people around us? Are we building bridges or walls? How can we nurture and value the human connections that enrich our lives? As we ponder this step, we are encouraged to recognize the invaluable worth of human relationships. It's a call to practice empathy, understanding and cooperation, remembering that at the core of our existence, we are deeply social and interconnected beings. If you're enjoying this, don't miss the opportunity. Get the ebook now. Stoicism in the 21st Century Ancient Strategies for Modern Challenges and unlock your prosperity, abundance, and improve your relationships with this ebook. Link in the pinned comment. Step 9 The Loss of Hope. In the ninth step of this introspective exploration, we address a deeply human challenge the loss of hope. Despair can be seen as a self-imposed prison, a state of mind that locks us into a cycle of negativity and discouragement. Stoicism, with its profound wisdom, encourages us to find strength and resilience even in the harshest circumstances. Hope is not mere uncommitted optimism or an escape from reality. On the contrary, it is an active and powerful force that propels us forward, even when situations seem bleak. It is the light that shines even in the deepest darkness, the beacon that guides us through life's storms. Consider hope as a flame. Sometimes this flame may dwindle to a nearly extinguished ember under the ashes of adversity and challenges. However, even the smallest ember can be rekindled into a vibrant flame with the breath of determination and persistence. The loss of hope is often the result of an excessive focus on external circumstances, on what is outside our control. Stoicism teaches us to recognize and accept these external realities, but also to maintain our internal power of reaction and perspective. It is the art of separating what we cannot change from what is within our reach and acting with courage and wisdom. This ninth step is an invitation to reignite the hope within us. It's a call to look beyond immediate difficulties and envision possibilities. How can we cultivate a mindset that not only withstands challenges, but also uses them as fuel for personal growth? As we reflect on this step, we are invited to consider how hope can become a powerful ally in our journey. It allows us to see beyond the present, dream of a better future, and actively work to make it a reality. Hope is the essential ingredient that transforms obstacles into opportunities and despair into determination. Step 10. Relinquishing personal power. We arrive at the tenth and final step of this introspective journey, a crucial moment, the relinquishment of personal power. Marcus Aurelius, in his enduring wisdom, reminds us you have power over your mind, not over external events. Giving up this personal power is indeed a step towards ruin. The concept of personal power goes beyond the mere ability to influence others or events around us. It is primarily about mastery over our thoughts, reactions, and choices. It's the recognition that although we cannot control external events, we have total governance over how we respond to them. When we relinquish our personal power, we place ourselves at the mercy of circumstances, allowing external factors to define our emotional state and life trajectory. It's like being at the helm of a ship but letting the waves and winds decide our course, instead of taking command and charting our own path. Reclaiming and maintaining personal power requires a continuous commitment to self-awareness and self-discipline. It involves the practice of looking inward, identifying our patterns of thought and behavior, 
and then consciously choosing how we want to respond to various life situations. This tenth step is an invitation for deep reflection on how we are exercising our personal power. Are we allowing external circumstances to dictate our happiness and inner peace? Are we acting as the protagonists of our story or merely as spectators? How can we strengthen our minds to be the true architects of our lives? As we ponder this step, we are encouraged to take responsibility for our reactions and attitudes. It's a call to affirm our personal power, recognizing that while we don't have control over everything, we have the power to choose how we will live each given moment. Step 11, the evasion of self-knowledge. Continuing on this journey of self-exploration, the 11th step addresses the evasion of self-knowledge. Neglecting the importance of deeply knowing oneself is a significant obstacle to growth and personal development. Avoiding reflection on thoughts, feelings, motivations, strengths, weaknesses, dreams and fears leads to the continuous repetition of mistakes and to personal and emotional stagnation. Self-knowledge is not a luxury or a philosophical indulgence. It is an essential tool for a conscious and intentional life. It is through understanding who we are, what drives us, and what scares us, that we can begin to shape a life that reflects our truest values and aspirations. When we avoid self-knowledge, we close the doors to learning and evolution. We become trapped in cycles of behavior and thought that no longer serve us, repeating the same mistakes and missing opportunities for growth. Like a boat adrift without a compass or map, our journey becomes erratic and disoriented. Facing ourselves with honesty and courage can be challenging. It is easier to look away than to confront our imperfections and fears. However, it is only through this brave confrontation with our true essence that we can begin to build a path of true transformation and fulfillment. This step is an invitation for a deep dive into our own psyche. It's an opportunity to question, explore and understand. What beliefs are guiding my life? What truly motivates me? What fears am I avoiding facing? How can I use this knowledge to grow and evolve? As we reflect on this step, we are invited to adopt introspection as a regular practice, not as an exercise in self-judgment, but as an act of self-love and self-acceptance. Recognizing that each moment of self-knowledge is a step toward a more authentic and satisfying life. Each step towards disaster is also an invitation to redemption. Remember, it is within us that the power resides to reverse course, to seek self-control, strength and balance. The path of stoicism which we have explored together here is not easy, but it is rewarding. It leads us to a deep understanding of who we are and what we can be. On this channel, we embark on this journey together, not just to survive, but to thrive in life's storms. And I want to invite you who are on the other side to be part of this transformative community. By subscribing, liking and sharing our videos, you not only support us, but also become part of a larger movement, a movement in pursuit of personal growth and wisdom. Comment below how these ideas are impacting your life and what else you would like to explore in our future videos. And don't forget to share this video with someone you believe will also benefit from this journey. Remember, your journey towards self-knowledge and resilience starts with a simple click. So don't hesitate, join us in this transformative adventure. Until the next video, where we will continue to tread this path, not just surviving, but thriving together.